My name is Michael Anthony. And until his death, I was executive secretary to John Beresford Tipton, a multi-billionaire who had the strange hobby of giving away one million dollars. One million dollars tax-free to an individual who had never met him, who indeed had never even heard of him. This is Silverstone, John Beresford Tipton's 60,000 acre estate. Mr. Tipton was a man of amazingly wide interests, so wide that one never knew what to expect when called into his presence. You sent for me, sir? Have you ever seen a device like this, Mike? A candle, sir? A candle burning toward an explosive powder. I understand it was once very popular as a torture device. I, I don't believe I ever... There are people whose lives are lived this way. It can cause great tension, wouldn't you say? I would, sir. Yes, I would. Perhaps it's something in the past they fear, or something never quite fully accepted or faced up to. Uh, sir? Oh, are you worried, Mike? <laughs> Don't be, it's only charcoal. Here, Mike, our next millionaire. For many years, Norman Conover had been a devoted father, but he realized his son needed a mother. When he remarried, that problem was solved, but he still had a deep concern about his son. Hello, Norman. John? Your son home? Lou? Uh, no, not yet. Why? It's nothing serious, just a warning. Oh. Found these on the desk this morning. Parking tickets? Three citations pinned to that jalopy of his, and he hasn't come by to pay the fines. Parking tickets? I thought I'd better drop him by myself. I'll speak to him as soon as he gets home. Thank you, John. Goodbye, Norman. Who was it? The police. An official police warning. Parking tickets? Oh, dear. What if they turn up one day and it wasn't just the parking tickets? Most boys his age get a little careless. If you ever got into serious trouble, it'd be my fault. Well, it's been wonderful since I married you, but before that, I'm afraid I spoiled him too much. Lou is a wonderful boy. He should turn out like that. You didn't know Lou's mother, Janet. She was a... I do love you. Excuse me. I'm sorry I'm late. Where have you been? Uh, out driving around visiting. Dinner ready? Just as soon as you and your father have a little chat. This came for you. Oh, I see. Well, I've been meaning to take care of this, Dad, but well, I've been kind of putting it off. And well, you know how it is. My guess is you didn't have the money. You're getting very warm. Well, you see, Dad, it was nine bucks and. I've had some pretty heavy expenses. Well, you're lately. old enough to show a little ordinary judgment. If you have a problem you can't solve, you come to me. Do you really mean that? Of course I mean it. And could you loan me nine bucks? Well, you be sure you take this down to the police station the first thing in the morning. I will. Hmm. I'll get washed up. Well, I'll get a chance. Mr. Norman Conover? Yes? My name is Michael Anthony. I went to your grocery store this afternoon, but they told me I just missed you. Well, I usually do my buying downtown. Well, I'm not a salesman, Mr. Conover. I'll only take a few minutes of your time. Well, come on in. Oh, this is uh, Mrs. Conover? Mr. Uh, Anthony. Anthony, yes. How do you do? Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. I have a gift for you, Mr. Conover. Oh, who's it from? I'm sorry, your benefactor must remain anonymous. 
but he's giving you one million dollars, tax-free. Oh, I see. A contest now for the grocers instead of the customers. <laughs> oh, you don't have to win it. It's yours if you'll just sign an agreement. Just sign an agreement, that's all? That's all, Mrs. Conover. It merely requires that neither of you ever reveal the source of the money or the exact amount on penalty of forfeiture, and that you make no effort to learn the identity of the donor. Whose oh. idea is this? There are a couple of practical jokers in the neighborhood. No, it's not a joke. I'm quite serious. Janet, this is a cashier's check. You mean it's true? And you may use it any way you please. But th th this is a million dollars. Oh, Janet, we could... Do you realize what this means? Just sign this agreement here, please. Sensational, Dad. It really is. Yeah, this one's nearly finished. Works begun on four others. We're not through yet. Uh, you're a tycoon, Dad. You know that? You're a living tycoon. <laughs> I'm really proud of you. Well, where are you going? Oh, the road races. Today's the big race. Oh. Lou, this morning I sent out your application to Harvard. Harvard? Oh, great. Well, what's the matter? Don't you want to go east to school? Oh, sure, Dad. But, well, you know, I've got lots of time, and I uh, really don't have time to talk about it right now. Look, Dad, uh, there's some guys waiting for me in the car, and if, if I don't get down there right now... I... Sure. You run along. Okay, Dad. See you later. Bye. Bye. You know, he won't spend five minutes thinking about anything serious. Janet, when's he gonna grow up? Mail King. Oh. Some new clippings about the new stores. Good. Cleveland Journal. Latest purchase in the growing Norman Conover grocery enterprise with the sale Jenna. today. What is it? It's from her. Her? Lou's mother. Myra Putnam. She's coming back. You said she agreed not to. She's on her way. She's coming back. She's on her way back. Why? You see, I, I've been living a lie for 14 years. I, I wanted to protect Lou from something ugly. I, I thought if he never knew anything about his mother, that there'd be less chances turning out like her. And she agreed never to see her own son. Oh, yes. Yes, she was glad to be rid of both of us. Well, there's only one thing I can tell you. Lou must know the truth. Oh, well, yes, but I, I can't. She's coming back, Norman. Can't avoid the issue any longer. But he's still just a kid. Have you ever given him a chance to grow up? He'll never trust me again if I tell him I've lied to him. And what do you suppose he'll do if someone else tells him first? <laughs> You uh, call my home and see if my son is there. Oh, he's here, Mr. Conover. He's waiting for you in your office. Oh, 
Hi, Dad. Listen, Bill Grant has finally decided to sell his sports car. Sports car? Yeah, I want to buy it if it's all right with you. Lou, let's not go into that right now. There's something that you well, and I have to talk well, over. Well, look, Dad, if I don't act very fast, well, there are about a dozen guys who've got their eye on the car. Lou, there's something that's much more important. Well, Dad, this is important to me. Look, Lou, will you please calm down? Look, you tell me to come to you if I have a problem, right? And when I do, what happens? I asked you to calm down. In the first place, I don't think you're old enough to have a car like that in the Old enough, place. Dad? Look, there are a lot of guys my Lou, age. Please, listen to me. Yes? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there's someone here to see you. She said it's important. Uh, Mrs. Myra Putnam. Yes. Yes, in just a minute. Lou, you'll, uh, you'll have to excuse me now. Dad, I want to talk to you. We'll talk later, son. Hello, Norman. Myra. Is this your son? Yes. Uh, Lou, this is Mrs. Putnam. Hello, Lou. How do you do? Well, I'll come back when you're not so busy. Good day. You uh, can go on inside, Myra. Lou. Jane, you can go to lunch. I didn't expect to see him. Nice looking boy. Well, this is nice. Real elegant. And you're looking good, Norman. I wonder if I'd recognize you if, if we'd met by accident somewhere. I suppose I should have known you'd come back one day. Oh, I, I didn't think I would. Why have you? Oh, I don't know exactly. I, well, I read all those stories about you in the newspapers, about all your stores. I almost felt as though I were reading about a stranger. You're alone again then, huh? Can it really be that that long line of flashy dressers and big spenders is finally running out? Maybe. Maybe it has. What do you want from me, Myra? Well, I told you, I, I don't really know. It's just that uh, you're someone that I was once close to, and, well, I thought... No, I... stop it. You came here because you think I'm the only one left who'll take care of you. It's a nice little town. I can't have you here, Myra. You haven't told him, have you? Still think his mother's dead? That was the agreement, and that's the way it's going to stand. I created a memory for Lou, a pleasant one, one he can live with, one that won't hurt him. If necessary, I'll buy the memory, Myra. I can afford to. Well, you don't think I came here to take money from you, do you? Ten thousand should cover your expenses when you leave town. But I just got here. You can't stay here, Myra. It's out of the question. Some other... You don't have to insult me. I'm not the one who lied to Lou. You never had any feeling for anybody but yourself in your entire life. But it was your lie, and you still lie. You're not protecting all of us, you're protecting yourself.
month. I'd like to talk to you. I've got to talk to you. Come in. Well, how did you find me? There are only two hotels in town. You remember who I am, don't you? Well, yes, I know who you are. I know who you are. I heard you arguing in my father's office. I came back. I'm sorry, I... I didn't mean... Are you all right? Do you know something? I don't even know what to call you. Mrs. Putnam, mother. Mrs. Putnam. Don't do that. I just came to ask you a couple questions, Mrs. Putnam. I just want to know why my father's been lying to me all these years. And why the big secret? I don't know that I can tell you anything. I, I promise not to talk to you. If there's something you want to know about, ask your father. My father? There's a fountain of information. As long as I can remember, I've been trying to live up to what he wanted. To understand what he wanted. The whole time he's been handing me a line. He's been conning me. Lou, why? Just tell me why. What's so awful that I couldn't be trusted to hear it? He had his reasons. You're not going to tell me anything either, are you? Oh, wait a minute. Lou, I... How can I explain it? Well, there are just some people who have no business having children. I guess I was one of them. You want the truth? Truth is, I hardly knew you existed. You were a few months of inconvenience, and I got rid of it as soon as I could. I should have married Norman Conover in the first place. Why did you? I married lots of people. Practically a hobby. When I married your father, he was in the army. He was lonely and I liked him. But I wasn't cut out to be an army wife, hauling a baby from one training camp to another. You just left. I just left. Time my father told me you were dead. I married Ned Putnam. I got just what I deserved. No point in going into that sordid mess. I served a little time. Your father didn't want to tie that on you, and I'd almost completely forgotten you anyway, and I agreed never to come back. When you asked me to tell you, I'd better go home. Yes. You'd better go home where you belong. Lou. I don't know what I'm doing, but take this back to your father. Go on, take it.
Lou, where in the world have you been? We waited for you for dinner. You... What, what happened to you? Where did you get this? From my mother. I heard you two arguing in your office, and I went over and saw her. She told me everything. Lou. It's all right, Dad. It's all out in the open now. And you can stop worrying. Son, I... Dad, you told me when you got all that money that you set up a trust fund for me. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Well, I wonder if I could give some of that money to my mother. You don't have to do that. I'll take care of her. I promise. Thank you. Ooh, I didn't hear you come in. Oh, I just got here. What in the world have you been doing all day? Driving around, visiting? That's right, Mom. I've just been driving around and visiting. Mm.